started our job, we were thankful to have the previous customer we had has this awesome equipment. Nice Bobcat Mini and a nice John Deere letting us use some gravel. How does that sound on audio? So we're using the PLP Power Peak. We have 30 360 watt monocrystalline trinas going up. And we just got here, so about a six hour drive for Johnny, about four and a half for us. And uh, put my new auto leveling laser to work. And we're setting these posts now. We've got to put seven in, got nine yards of concrete coming in the morning. Well, tomorrow anyway. So, here we go. Really nice saving our. Just what a blessing to have this machine, I'm telling you what. And we moved the array from the original location because there was gas lines and water lines we, <laughs> we wanted to get away from. And so we're going to really shorten up our trench, which is a blessing. Hi, you two. Why would you throw Antonio in the hole? <laughs> That's not very nice. He's looking for gold. You need to come. Here's this first swimming pool. Oh, we got, got a little tent up here. We thought it was going to be a lot cooler up here in West Virginia, but it's not. So we set up a tent. Command control center here as we put up some solar. And then we're going to grid tie it. There's a meter just on, around the corner of the house there. And we'll be putting up our disconnects and line side taps. So, really good job. Really, hopefully, well, the only thing that's going to mess with us on this one looks like is the weather. We'll see how we do. All right, folks, we're getting into the electrical side now. Hopefully I won't get demonetized by Johnny singing Tom Petty over there. It's, okay. it's pretty bad right now. But it is entertaining. I'm arranging it. You're arranging it? Yeah, it's an arrangement. Oh, it's a Tom Petty arrangement. A lot of people think that I wrote that one. I didn't. Well, that's good. Otherwise, I'm going to get demonetized. No, it's an arrangement. It's original. Oh, it's an original. I think it's called a derangement. A derangement, yeah. Wait till I listen to Greatest Hits tonight and I come back with every one of them rearranged. <laughs> so what we're doing here, we don't usually do uh, grid ties. A lot of our jobs are, of course, battery backups. But we're doing uh, SMA grid tie inverters and we're going to be doing a line side tap in the transfer switch using the Ilsco piercing, insulated piercing line side tap gizmos. How's that for technical term and now we're gonna and then we're gonna run our mobile home feeder over to the array but we gotta get them taps the concrete's on its way a little ilsco line sign tappage this check them the out ilsco coupler or coupler top <coughs> i think they act they call it a coupler tap coupler tap so, yeah insulation piercing conductor what yeah. size is this is four aught to number six on the big terminal and four out, four out to number six on the little terminal, and four out to number four on the big terminal. I'm sorry. So this terminal is four out to number four. This terminal is four out to number six. And we're using six an, on our little. Yeah, and this is an insulation piercing conductor. So you have to do a line side tap, which the line side of this system would be between the meter. Between the meter and, and the first disconnect. Luckily, in a transfer switch, you've got some conductors and plenty of room to yeah, tap on. That makes it nice. And this gives you gives you the ability to feed way more current into the system yep. whereas if I was to tap in here I'd be limited by 120 percent of the 200 amp bus bar this is a 200 amp conductor and it's probably feeding a 200 amp bus bar so. we have no limitation here but we do have to put a fuse disconnect right yeah. because of it and it'll be 60 amp fuse disconnect so Johnny's getting set up here to do the tap. And you don't want to call it a line side tap, you want to call it a supply side connection. Well, they call it line side tap on the Ilsco site. I know, but you want to call it a supply side connection. All right, strike that from the record. It's a supply side connection. I'm just getting them in place right now. I'm going to put my straight conductors oh, in. Yeah, and then pierce. Oops, sorry, Antonio. 
We were all getting lit up here. We didn't know why there was a customer's supercharged cow fence, electric fence, just lighting us up here for a bit. <laughs> oh, man. Johnny was so happy to be able to get on the tractor. He lit up like it was Christmas. He's having fun. He just doesn't want us to look at him. He's really messing up when we stare at him. We just can't help ourselves. <laughs> hey, boss. Thanks for the dirt. Okay, we're in day three solar build, and before I could film anything, we already got the panels up. So, put up the rails. Let me show you from the back. Obviously, we're cutting these rails off. This is the PLP Power Peak from the back. Nice and clean. Here are the splices. These plastic covers, they cover up the self-tappers in the splice. There's um, eight screws run in to that joint. This is a splice joint here. And we stagger those and we don't put them on any one of the struts. So, we've got splices all over and nothing from an engineering standpoint. Wind loads shouldn't never put a, a splice at the strut location. We got the electrical going on over here. Two SMA 5.0 US transformerless inverters. AC combiner panel. And then we've just got a short, well it's a 155 foot run over to the house with a mobile home feeder 2224. And uh, that's it. You've seen these before, done these before. And uh, now we got a little rain cover in case the rain comes this afternoon. In pretty good shape. So we um, we did take advantage of the adjustability on this one. We had a post that was a little bit low, so they give you the ability. It's infinitely adjustable with the slots here, the slots there, the different multiple hole position here. There's no excuse for not getting those rails planing out really nice. So even if you're off a little bit on your posts, you can get it back with the strut assembly adjustment in it. It looks pretty straight. Let me see if I can get a straight line shot there down the gap between the panels. And on the money. Looks really good. So now we'll just, uh, they sent us the, well, anyway, we're, we're going to cut these rails off. They're usually not this much scrap on, on a job. So we'll just, uh, three inches beyond is the minimum from the end clamp that you cut. So we have uh, aluminum blades. We'll cut that off, make it look good. All right, it's almost lunchtime. I think uh, I heard a yes. I think Johnny found the Myers hub he's been looking for. All right, we don't have to go to the. He found it. He found it. You bit me, boys. If it was a snake. All right, we're doing good. We had a local electrician come and help us out, which is really helpful. There's always the. Uh, the worst part of solar can be the administrative and the paperwork part. So I think we've got all that taken care of. It's nice to have it done before we finish the job. And uh, that's it. Clean these things up. They're a little dusty. Again, these are 370 watt trainers. There's 11.1 kW on this. All right, we'll be back with uh, the final version of it. All right, we're at the end of day three, getting ready to energize the inverters. Johnny's popping the fuses in the disconnect, and we'll turn on one inverter at a time. We've got two circuits in each, two solar circuits in each inverter. They're 5KW, and we'll button things up here. All the grounds are run, lightning arresters are in. It's been a while since we've done a grid tie system, but this was fun, and it's looking clean. New addition, every job we do is a little different. Got these cute little baby weather heads on this one. That's kind of nice. So uh, as soon as he gets back, we'll throw some breakers. All right, we are up and running. Both inverters, checked out voltages on everything. Everything's good. So what timing you can hear. You can hear, we're seeing lots of lightning. We're batting down the hatches. coming. 
good. It's gonna wash these panels off. They're all dusty. We didn't have too much scrap cutoffs on there. We could do a little less. Do with a little less though. All right, we're doing good. Everything ready. We're gonna load in the morning and head back to South Carolina. And uh, it's been just a nice, nice place to work. Cows on the hillside. Great customers. Hard to beat the hills of West Virginia. So we will, uh, all the paperwork's in, and we'll just wait for the power company to sign him off and uh, change out his meter, and he'll be able to have uh, no power bill for the rest of his life. That's our goal. And I hope it's his goal, too. So we did the neighbors a few months ago, and he's selling back about 70 kilowatts a day. He's super happy. A new construction project, so we don't know how his bill's going to turn out yet. But he's uh, he's definitely ahead of the game. All right, Trina 370s, two SMA 5.0s, grid tie system, and uh, we're going to spend one more night here in West Virginia. Load up in the morning and head home. All right, folks, thanks for watching. If you have questions about any of these systems and would like one, we uh, would like to put one in for you or get you the materials and walk you through the process of putting one in and uh, we like the ground mounts they really I just like, like the ground mounts from anything just from to be able to clean the panels and check on things and just uh, just our preference sometimes you have to put it on the roof and sometimes it makes more sense to put it on the roof depending on your shading and some people don't like the looks of solar and if you build a building to hide the solar you can do that but when it uh when it gives you a, no power bill for the rest of your life man that solar looks good all right folks just contact us at practicalpreppers.com be happy to get you going and with a nice renewable energy system we can add generators we can add batteries we can add hydro wind if it's appropriate and uh, do some nice hybrid systems or go completely off-grid if that's what you want. All right, check out practicalpreppers.com, phone number and emails in the upper left-hand corner. Engineer 775 signing out. Last day before we go home, misty morning. It's gonna go over and some things with the, the homeowner and configure it connect the SMAs to the Sunny Boy portal and uh, so that's connected actually pretty decent Wi-Fi signal out here so we can uh, monitor the system and see that it's doing well a little troubleshooting if we ever have any issues without having to drive up here <laughs>